Levi, how many countries have you visited? So far, I've been to 46 countries, which is about 25% of the world, I guess. Um, yeah, uh, still counting. I really wish I could travel more, um, hopefully. Wow, it's not many people as lucky as you. Uh, how, how did you get started? Uh, I feel grateful, yeah, you're right. Um, I feel like many people would love to travel and uh, so to say, they say, I'd like to live the way you live. Um, however, uh, many people don't know the behind the scenes for sure, right? And uh, there's a lot yeah. of sacrifice we need to make uh, depending on your priority and, um, and what you, you really want to get out of the travel itself, really. Um, how, I st how I got started, um, naturally, since I was a kid, my grandma used to bring me around. So I feel like that's how it started, the the nature of me being adventurous. Um, and uh, since I was in school and I just, I loved joining competitions and uh, that uh, developed into um, interest joining symposium conferences abroad when i was in uni that's how that's also how i met you so that's one of the starting points yeah. where we got to explore uh, that was like 12 years ago to right travel yes yes we met <laughs> malaysia in in uh, in a youth conference um and uh, that's i think at that point we were in the circle of opportunists so to say right we just tried finding ways to travel uh, for free for sure uh, or sponsored by the, by the university or, or the organizer um yeah yes. that's how i got started and then over time it, mm. it's just um planning and then uh, some interest curiosity so what's actually the most impressive moment that you never forget Wow, this is a, a difficult question because um, I think I had to highlight one thing. I lost my phone in Casablanca. It got, I actually got snatched. And I think that was my first time that I got snatched. Uh, but within 24 hours, the police managed to find my phone, including my SIM card. <laughs> Can you believe it? It yeah. was amazing. And we're talking about the real work of the police. Um, I don't think I've experienced that. And um, yeah, so that was that was something <laughs> to remember. Yeah, that's amazing. What about challenges? When you flew me out of Casablanca back then, of Morocco, to take care of your villa in Bali, I remember the, it was the... Uh, the jet lag and the change of climate, it really got to me. Um, so, uh, remember the caretaker of the house? She thought I died or something because I didn't get out of the bed for a few days because it, I, I, I got a bit of a uh, heat stroke or something, you know, somehow. Light one, for sure. Another challenge is, of course, food, but I'm not picky. I used to be uh, vegetarian for 11 years. In Somaliland, what I miss is uh, the camel milk. It was really good. <laughs> it had a, a hint of uh, ash taste because of the uh, container that they that they bring to milk the camel. I never tried it. Well, yeah, you should. It's really good. So the challenge is of course transitioning from one project to another. Um, this is not much of a challenge that necessarily a bad thing. I think I think it's more a good thing for, for me, especially because. When you travel, as a travel, not a tourist, you're never gonna be comfortable. So you 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 have to to constantly think. You have to give up your comfort. Yes. Yes, it's because you have to constantly think. It's all about survival. What's next? No, for example, um, when I was uh, in India, right? Towards uh. uh when, when I almost finished the yoga certification, then I'm thinking, so what my guru taught me in, in India was that as well. When you do something that is, um, even there's a, a bit of element of selflessness in it, it will normally come through um, faster, you know, in terms of your goals. So that's why I always, most of the time, I don't think about money as much. I'm mm -hmm. thinking about, if I can help something or someone with my time and energy and my skill, I go to those type of projects first. So um, this project I found in Erasmus project, uh, Erasmus in school project. So they uh, 
they reached out and then I ended up in Casablanca. Uh, so I used to teach um, special kids yoga. So that was satisfying. Um, and then I, I was placed in several private schools just to uh, teach English and train the, uh, the foreign language teachers there. You have to plan everything carefully because I came to this point of my life dynamically on and off in a sense that where would I want to be? Is it a city or a village? That type of choice See, you have to yeah. make and because that is related to what will you do there as well mm -hmm. and then who's going to host you for example in a sense of project is it a school is it an organization uh, what will you do right and the timing is very important for example i started uh, looking up uh, the somaliland job back then when i was still in colombia uh, one thing about me i'm a high risk taker i feel like now that i know myself a lot more i don't budget my food i only think about long haul transport so mm -hmm. and it works so far so i've never so people think that oh you you you're possibly rich but you are rich because you can explore this much that's not necessarily true i just budget carefully i just know my priorities so uh it's all about getting there and then the rest are figuring things out so as long as you know for example uh, in morocco i already know that someone will pick me up at the airport then that's it you know, the rest don't think too much of it because things can change anytime, any day. You, you mentioned about you don't uh, possess on money or something. So that being said, you need to downsize um, your stuff. Like you need to carry just a bit stuff in your bag, for example. You're right. Travel light is very important. And I think over time, every traveler le uh, has got to learn this the hard way. Yeah, because so many people like they, um, yeah, they, they they try to settle and then they try to buy more things and more things and more things until yeah. reaching yeah. that those things uh, actually control them. But you can control and you can downsize uh, your stuff and then you you good to go. <laughs> That's really cool. You're right. You're right. You don't need that many stuff. But at the end of the day, when you think about it, all you need is just enough budget to live you know clothes that you can wash you know so you see what i mean it's you don't need this luxurious stuff you don't unless that's what you're looking for just settling and then obviously you can yeah you can stock up on, on uh, non-essential stuff yeah it might be a bit of emotional but how do you feel when you see your friends uh your families uh your family members for example they get married and then they probably get settled with the job and kids for example so how do you feel do you feel any um you know what i mean part of being an adult is knowing uh what you want to do with your life and mm. making those choices right so traveling and moving around is my choice of how how i live my life so uh, obviously it comes uh it comes with the sacrifice and the consequences right so some people see sacrifice as consequences vice versa uh but in terms of what you see uh, in terms of what you said when when let's say our circle they they build family um uh, they uh, they grow with their family they get married um that's what they would like to do right so yeah. for me that's not my priority now so it shouldn't affect me in any way yeah yeah so that I think being you should true. live your life the way you want to not not how people perceive it or how people want to, to want you to live your life wow yes. Levi I've been so much inspired by your stories and I believe uh, people who watch uh, our video also get inspired by you and yeah thank you so much for your time and for your stories and it's very inspiring honored to be here i'm happy to share um yeah uh, we can always do more talks on the, any topics that uh, you guys might be interested in to know more <laughs>
Okay, ah, it's better now.